Okay, today is November 9, 2022, and I just uh, found a, a, a link, an article that linked to a study, and I realize it's the same study that Doug McGuff talked about. I don't know if the article is still on his um, website. It's on my website, sustainablesuccess.ca. It's called The Fountain of Youth, and it refers to a study, and interestingly, this is not new. The study was done in 2007. And as a result of it, Doug McGuff uh, did an article on it. And, uh, and it, you know, the, one of the things about it is when Doug, you know, said this is a revolutionary study, you know, things should be, you know, this should be making headlines everywhere. And yet, as he says, we heard crickets. There was nothing to it whatsoever. So the article here, and it's put out by uh, the Strength Clinic, which I believe Strength Clinic is Dwayne Wimmer's uh, facility, who I've also interviewed on a, uh, oh no, this one here, well, this one here shows it's from Portugal. Or I guess Dwayne is the one who shared it uh, from this, but the article uh, or the, the study was referred to by Doug McGuff. So basically, um, mitochondria so mitochondria the part of every cell in your body and it's the organelles responsible for energy production in our body now i'm not kind of a medical background but i think of every cell in your body having a little engine and that's your mitochondria and it says here if you feel like you're always tired if you experience memory loss if you have frequent muscle pain uh medications for cholesterol hypertension diabetes it's very likely that your mitochondria are not in great shape so it's basically finding that uh, when, when aging, basically, as we age faster, when our mitochondria uh, is, is being damaged, insults inflicted, things like chronic stress, lack of sleep, poor eating choices, lack of exercise, particularly strength training, use of alcohol, tobacco, exposure to pollutants. There's a few examples of this. So, they took this study, and it's interesting, I, uh, Doug had referred to it, but this goes into more detail. So we took 25 elderly people, mean age 68 years. So they took people who were already active, but not doing strength training. In other words, they didn't want to just look at people who were couch potatoes and suddenly started doing exercise. So these people were already involved in things like walking, gardening, tennis, golf, cycling. They were doing that three or four times a week. And they took 26 young adults. So the 25 older people were 68, 26 ones were about 24 years old, relatively inactive, some of them participating in recreation. So, and, and there was some things here, relatively active older and sedentary younger, study the aging process on healthy elderly and not just, you know, couch potato. So, and they also had to have a medical uh evaluation first so they eliminated anybody that had a history of heart disease hypertension copd diabetes mellitus so they want you know relatively healthy active people and so <clears throat> they did workouts for six months and they, they were doing it just twice a week and i see they started with one set it doesn't say anything about whether they were going to failure or not, uh, but they were doing one set, they graduated up to three sets. They were using the very, uh, in my opinion, strange way of measuring intensity based on uh, the 50%, uh, the, the percentage of maximum one rep that they could do. They started out with 50%, increased to three sets at 80%, which really that part, unfortunately, doesn't tell us a whole lot of anything because uh you know if you're doing 50 percent of your one art rep max but you keep doing it until you can't do another rep if your life depended on it that's actually far harder than using 80 percent of your one rep max but only doing a few reps not going anywhere near um so you can't do enough but anyways that's the way they did it which goes to show that the results uh, arguably would be better uh, by a lot if they had been used proper strength training, uh, because most studies today find that intensity, the level of effort that you put into it is by far 
the single thing that you basically uh, will make the biggest difference in it. In other words, how close you are coming to actual muscular failure. Either you're doing as many as you possibly can or relatively close to that. So they did um, some biopsies. So anyways, they identified 596 different genes that were differentially expressed between the two age groups. So in other words, these are you know, older, younger, 596. So they identified 179 of those that showed a remarkable reversal in their expression profile after six months of training. Uh, so it basically means it not only slows down, but also reverses the aging process at the genetic level. Uh, and the genetic expression of the elderly individuals became similar to those of the younger group. And mitochondrial dysfunction, when your mitochondria doesn't work yet, closely related physical began to reverse after six months of training. Uh, muscular strength is expected is the ones whose strength train got stronger. The initial gap of 59% uh, of older people uh, between the older and the younger was reduced to 38% after six months of training, which actually I think is, is actually fairly dismal, I think, uh, in, in uh, places that train the way that uh, we do, and Doug McGuff and Dwayne Wimmer and other people that I've mentioned in this, uh, I would say that it would go to almost being just as strong in six months. That's quite a long time of training. So uh, physical exercise, so see morbidity and mortality. So the importance of physical exercise, telling us it is within our power to increase health and longevity. In this case, the fountain of youth is something we know and something that is really relatively accessible to everyone. Now, it isn't a pill. It doesn't come in a ball. It's not a quick fix. There's a catch. You have to work hard. But here's good news. If you're training properly, once a week, twice a week is all you need to do. And the exercise doesn't have to be, doesn't take longer than 20 or 30 minutes. Now, it does involve you, as I said, carrying exercises to the point of muscular fatigue, either till you are unable to do another repetition or you've come extremely close to that. We know that you don't have to go completely to that to get um, the, the desired effect, but it's really difficult to measure, um, you know, almost failure type of thing, because people have also shown in other studies that a perception, you know, if you say to somebody, train until you feel like you can only do one or two more, most people will will widely underestimate what they could do. And I've seen that in my own uh, training with people. Anyways, that's it for now. So thank you for watching. Sharing is, is appreciated. Comments are welcome. And of course, subscribing. Please and thanks. Bye for now.